Hey, it's Brandon Styles, and today we are talking about how to create really cool SVG shapes on your website. So this is a big trend that you've seen in probably the last couple of years where different sites are using different, like they're usually called SVG waves, or they're just called blobs or something like that. It kind of blends to a modern look. A lot of times people will pair these with like a gradient color on the wave or something like that. It just gives the website a little bit of a three-dimensional feel, a little pop feel, a little modern feel. But the problem is, is that they've usually and traditionally been really kind of just difficult and kind of a pain in the ass to do. So they came up with a couple of different tools that make it a lot easier to create these SVG shapes. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can create them easily so your website will look really cool and you can add a little bit of a design flair to it. Let's check it out. So here is the custom shape dividers app. You can find this at shapedivider.app and this is really cool. So this is essentially just a web app that makes these kind of different patterns right here. So what you can do is you can come up here and you can change and make any alterations you want. So if you don't want that wave shape, maybe you want like an arrow, you can kind of see how that works right here. You can change the height of it if you like, so you can make it uh, shallower or deeper. You can change the width of it. So with this one, like you could make it that width and then you can invert it too. So if you wanted it to stick the arrow to kind of point up instead of coming down. And then you could also switch whether you want it to be on the top or the bottom. And then of course, pick the background color too. The background color is important, whatever your section is below here. For example, if your section below this shape was this color blue, you'd want it to pick this color blue. But usually most people go with white. It kind of makes it pop off, right? It looks a little lot better. So a typical shape that you will see is something like this. This waves one is pretty cool. So I'm gonna show you how to add this into both regular HTML website, like if you're coding by hand. And I'm also gonna show you how to add it into a WordPress site, like if you're using Divi or something like that. So I'm just gonna mess with this just a little bit more. Maybe we could change the height of the waves just a little bit, make it more subtle. If you didn't want the width to be 100%, see that's kind of, you miss a lot of the wave when you do like that. So that's, you know, that's kind of cool. Let's just use it at zero. So when you get to whatever shape you want, you just click this download button and it gives you a couple of different options here. So this actually just gives you the HTML and CSS to put in there. But if you'd like to download it as an SVG, you can click that and it goes uh, down here into your downloads file and you can import it. So how do you instantiate this? Well, I'm gonna show you first with just regular HTML, and then you can fast forward if you're working with WordPress or something like that where you can actually add code. So first, let's jump over to just a regular HTML file. I'm going to copy this HTML right here, and I'm gonna copy all this CSS, which I'll just do by clicking that. I'm gonna create a new file here. Let's call it just uh, Waves Tester, and then let's open that with VS Code. And since this is just a simple app, we can just create a new index.html file. And then I'm going to put in some boilerplate here just so that you don't have to watch me type out all that HTML. And then just so that we have it, let's type just an H1 that says, welcome to the app. And what we want to do is we want to open this on a live server. And there we go. So I'm going to bring this down into like a new window here. Make it a little smaller. So there's just like a basic app. We could even like put a button in here if we wanted to just to kind of show what we're gonna be doing in a minute. All right, and there's the basis of what we're doing, right? We can see. So now we just need to add that shape in. So what you can do is let's wrap this. Now, one thing you'll notice on this app side is that you have to set the wrapper element position property to relative. So let's just put this, let's pretend this is a section right here. So I'm just gonna call, I'm just gonna write div and then let's move these into the section. And then I just wanna hard code this real quick just for the sake of this demonstration. So I'm gonna give it a, an inline style tag and we're gonna call it position relative. And then below this, we actually want to add that HTML that we just copied. All right, now if we save it, we should start to see it there. Okay, so now that we can see that shape has been instantiated, okay? So let's come up here to above the head and let's just add in a style tag. I'll kind of separate it out so you can see it. And let's make just a few changes. So let's just get rid of all the margin and padding. There, now that spreads everything out. Let's change the background of this div just so that we actually have something cooler than you know what this is. But first, let's add in that uh, CSS we copied. Save it, and there we go. 
So we've added position relative in there. So just a couple things that we need to change. Let's actually give this div a background color. We can't see anything right now because we don't actually have a background color to compare it against. So I'm gonna give it a background color of let's just say deep sky blue. All right, now we're starting to kind of see this come to life and let's give it a min height, I think, 50 view heights. There we go. So now you can see this has pretty much come to life. And just if you wanted to kind of shape it up just a little bit, we can change the H1, there we go. And then if we wanted to kind of style this button up, margin, let's give it some padding, one view height right here. Let's give it a border radius of 100 pixels and then finally a border of none. And there you go. So you can see, and this shape is responsive too, which is really cool. And you can also go into that app we were just looking at and actually change the responsiveness of it according to, and kind of see what it looks like according to whatever size screen you're looking at. So that's how you can add it really easily onto an HTML document. Like if you're hand coding this, you're just essentially copying and pasting things. So what if you wanted to put something like this into WordPress or into Divi? It's a little bit more difficult, but you can absolutely do it. So let's go over to a WordPress website and let's create a new page. I'm just gonna call it Waves Tester. Let's use the Divi Builder. Let's just choose a pre-made layout just so that we don't have to build a page here. Find kind of a simple one. There's a simple one. Use this layout. It's gonna load up and then we can jump into the copying and pasting of our HTML and CSS. Kind of like we would normally do, there's just a couple extra steps because we're already building with the WYSIWYG editor if you're using Divi or something like that. Good deal, our page is built. We're just gonna build on the front end really quick. All right, so what I wanna do here is I wanna come down and I wanna just add a section maybe below this. Insert a regular section. We just wanna insert one row right here and we're going to choose code. Now in the code, we're going to paste that shape. There's a shape, we can already see it taking place. And then if we just come above here, we can insert a style tag and there we can paste the CSS that we copied from the shape app. Let's do it right here. All right. And then in this container, so we can kind of see the wave starting right here. So in this container, we want to give it a position of relative. I believe this is where we need to put it. So position relative. And then in the background, we just need to create a background color. So let's give it a gradient here. We can already see it starting to kind of take shape. So we need to just kind of get rid of all this margin and padding right here. And we need to kind of, you know what? Maybe this big section needs to have the relative. And this row does not, let me take it out of that. All right, and so past that, it looks like it's just playing with margin a little bit. Well, first of all, we need to make this row full size. So I'm going to give it a width of 100% and a max width of 100%. So then it spans the whole thing. Cool, now it's starting to kind of come together. So we just really need to give this section some padding at the top just so that we can kind of see the wave happening. So let's give it some top padding of, you know, maybe 300 pixels. There we go. And we just need to adjust the padding from there. You can see it's starting to come up. I don't know why it makes those jumps sometimes. It must have something to do with this shape rendering. And there we go. And you can kind of drag it like that. So that is how you can make these more complex shapes in WordPress. Now, of course, if you're using something like Divi, it already has this kind of background feature, so you don't have to bring that in. This is just if you don't have Divi and you're still doing a WYSIWYG editor, you can import it in on that coding. I hope that was helpful. Let me know if there's some other cool shape divider tools like this. I thought this was a really cool tool to give you some kind of modern looking sites and modern looking section shapes. So I hope you enjoyed it too. I'm Brandon Styles. Please subscribe if that was helpful and thanks so much for watching.